Um, from a cultural perspective, I think this is the, the, the interesting part about CloudReach. We're a little bit different. Um, we like to believe in the fact that the advice you get is as good as the questions you can ask. And we like to enable all our clients to really ask very tough and very smart questions. And that is where our people come in. We always work together with our clients. Um, we call it the team augmentation in that sense, where we work together with you so you know exactly what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and that it is in line what you need to achieve with your business. Um, and that is something where when the project ends, that means you know a lot more. And as I like to say, your cloud kung fu is stronger. Um, you know more and you can move to the next projects um, and move up the ladder from initial cloud adoption to complete full-scale automation and, and business agility. Uh, next slide, please. Um, with regards to our partnership with Microsoft, we have all the competencies, so I won't name them out. We do everything except workplace. And if you have questions about workplace, we can recommend a good partner or our friends at Microsoft can do that. Um, we were the first Kubernetes partner worldwide. It's one of our sweet spots, I'd say, besides migration, um, is to really work with you and, and the teams at Microsoft to, to, to implement that. All our resources and colleagues are certified and have project experience. Um, this is something as well, I think we, we are very proud of that you always have an experienced cloud reacher to, to guide you on your cloud journey. Um, it being from a initial cloud roadmap um, orientation, leveling the playing field across your organization, get the business on board, do not make it a IT driven only initiative um, to really bring the pieces together. Um, additional to that, we speak Microsoft, uh, we understand the funding structures, the possibilities for customers as a partner to help you to get the most out of the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, we were partner of the year in the UK. Um, we have a strong relationship here in Switzerland with Microsoft, with our friends in Wallisellen. And um, everything that we do as well is aligned to the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. Um, a little bit about our geography. We are locally based here in Zurich. Uh, we have a very strong connection to the Romandie um, with a, quite a lot of our customers in, in Geneva. Additional to that, we service or support a lot of our customers from Switzerland with initiatives around the globe, meaning uh, we're running projects in India, South America, Mexico, um, but all with a strong base here from Switzerland. So over to you, Errol. All right. Thanks, Renko, for a quick, uh, quick introduction of what CloudReach is. So we will be moving now to um, main content of our webinar. And I want to give you an overview of what it takes. And as Elodie uh, mentioned earlier, we're not going to give you another promise. It's really, we've seen, we've seen companies starting their cloud adoptions and failing. So we, we said we're not going to do that. We're just going to give a, um, give a brief overview and let's say three major steps, uh, what you need to take to actually have a successful adoption. So um, first thing, uh, first things first, um, I want to give a brief overview of what is happening in the market uh, and what we've seen at the customers and where are the trends going. So if we look at the, uh, how the cloud adoption has been uh, running so far, we've seen that IT was driving those, that cloud adoption. So IT would take their workloads and migrate them to the cloud. Um, but everything else, a part of IT, wasn't taking care of it. If you look at how actually cloud uh, impacts, which will come later on, you will see that IT or tech is not the only thing it's be being impacted. So we've seen around 2015, 2014, 15, that IT started massively adopting cloud, but it was just IT and we haven't seen the progress. Um, then there was a there was a disruptor uh, uh, came in in the sector, and this was really where the business started playing around with the cloud. Around 2018 came in that uh, the the notion that business units started playing with the cloud, so they would start playing with the uh, uh, Power BI. They will be taking some uh, AI or ML projects and trying to trying to adopt cloud from their perspective, so the entirely business perspective, no, no IT governance, just their playground to finish some of their projects. Um, 
So again, disconnected from what the best scenario would be. So IT going one line, um, business going another line, and, and we finally see that the companies start to move into more holistic uh, migration and adoption scenarios. So we see that the business and IT are coming together and starting the transformation and innovation as together. So um, we've seen some of the companies doing it from, from the very beginning, like uh, Netflix or any, any of those uh, well-known examples. So they've done it right from the start. But in our case, we see many companies finally getting together and putting the stuff uh, that jointly IT and business start um, adopting the cloud. So what it takes actually to, um, to adopt the cloud, um, I will start uh, actually explaining what are the primary um, drivers for the cloud adoption. Uh, surprisingly, you wouldn't find much of the IT in there. Very, very briefly, I'll come to that as well. But actually the first and the most common uh, case is the business agility. So we've seen that the companies require shorter times to market. And considering how the uh, classic IT or on-prem IT is actually handling it, it's fairly slow, it, it has long lead time, there is no flexibility, and there is, um, there is um, barely barely way to, to uh, change that, um, considering just that you have to order the, um, the servers, you have a lead times just to install the servers, rack it in, and so on and so on and so forth. So business requires to change nearly on a daily basis. So you might get a, a use case where suddenly uh, your, um, your, your, uh, your users would require a new feature or there is a new regulation and you have to implement it quickly. So we've seen that time to market is one of the primary drivers to actually start using the cloud. Um, digital disruption is, for example, a second one. So we've seen that there are plenty of new demands coming in, be it um, influenced by COVID, be it influenced just at the uh, digitization, uh, that we need to start innovating. We need to have a different means to create different products. Um, starting from very simple, like chatbots you would have on, typically on your website, or having uh, semi-automated uh, call center lines being uh, uh, delivering some automation or AI even in case of banks or in case of insurance companies. So there is a completely new area which is opening um, to the companies and opening opening um, to the users, end users, that they demand those kind of uh, features. And innovation and exploration is definitely a second uh, of, the, of the business drivers we've seen. Next thing we've seen as well is that plenty of companies have issues uh, keeping their um, risk in check. Um, meaning that um, if they have uh, oil, um, SLAs to keep for their customers, that they need to set up another data center, uh, that they need to keep it secure as well. And um, th this is getting really a bit more and more overhead on a, on a daily basis. So keeping data center secure makes it really tedious process. And um, the costs would skyrocket as well. So we've seen that costs and, and risk come together. So the, the less risk you want to take, the, the higher expense it will be for you. So um, cloud offers fairly easy and, and, and cheap ways to actually achieve that. If you look at the uh, major CSPs like uh, Microsoft with Azure or uh, Google GCP or Amazon AWS, they all offer number redundant uh, data centers in one region. So if you say Microsoft Azure, is uh, in, 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 uh, in Zurich and in Geneva, I believe, and they have, I think, third one in build. So inside, uh, inside one, one country, you will, you will have uh, geo-redundant data centers to keep your uh, workloads safe, so you can replicate amongst them, uh, but at really basically barely additional cost, because it's one region, you will have additional security in place where you can really start um, working on your your real uh, drivers like business agility or innovation. Um, side effect of it for sure 
there is some cost saving to be done. But I'll come to the cost saving as one of the typical mistakes on a premature migration. I'll come to that later on, which is kind of contradictory to, uh, to, to promise cloud is cheaper. So I want to tackle this one later on. And um, as the last, um, last of the drivers we've seen is really um, operational excellence. Um, we've seen that the companies actually, uh, over the time, they increase their, their technical depth, uh, be it simple patching, be it uh, keeping everything in check, um, being, um, you know, working on a security. So it's constantly growing and having everything on prem that the technical depth is really growing badly. And um, moving into the cloud gives a really another a possibility. Everything as a code, so infrastructure as a code would give you some fantastic opportunities to automate everything. So you would, you would move away from the old ways of thinking how to actually, uh, how to actually really uh, start automating and uh, excelling um, if you're considering how let's say a process was looking like an on-prem you could probably cut down a number of steps and automate them and actually achieve operational excellence without really additional cost added. so um, having these four primary drivers the question is now well what do i need to do to actually move to the cloud and as a First step we always say is align with business. So previously IT would be going, as I mentioned, one direction, business would be going second direction. They all have a conflicting uh, targets and goals and that never ends well. So to actually um, get really going all in the same direction, we always say, please, and we always assist our customers define those goals define uh, the strategy which will be shared among business and IT. Once that strategy is in place, you can create a vision and some principles that will guide your adoption or transformation into the same direction. Um, we've seen in, in many different cases that adoption starts but are unaligned and business is conflicting with it it is conflicting with business and and you don't progress um considering some of the examples where most common uh, alignment is happening is introduction of devops for example this is where the first step where you already have that mentality aligning removing barriers and trying to work on the same goals devops brings a lot more um, besides of alignment uh, it's, a, it's a cultural change, but nevertheless, we, we say really start small, start small steps. And if really the step, first step is really to align on the strategy. Um, I, mentioned, I mentioned before that you might have some issues if you move into the cloud um, without actually, you know, taking care of it. So I would love to explain why. Um, moving into the cloud, is a complex process. Um, it touches everything around the company. So we talk about uh, a triangle where you have uh, technology on one end, where you have a people on the other hand, and the process on the third place. So keeping them all in check, it's really huge effort to make it really properly done. Um, there, on the people side, you would have challenges of uh, upskilling your people you would have uh, even fears like people being um, afraid of losing their jobs would move to the cloud for some it might be true if you if you consider that you had uh, people building your data centers you don't need pe uh, people building your data centers anymore but you still need the people to operate the the, the cloud workloads you still need uh, network engineers that understand how the network is put together. They won't be operating routers, they will be operating um, software defined networks or infrastructure as a code, but they won't, they, you would will still need them. You would still need architects and you would still need uh, um, system engineers and stuff like that. But it just, there is a shift going in and challenging uh, for, for many of, of personnel in your company. So 
having people um, in focus is really important, as well as uh, the process. If you do everything you did like, like you did on-prem, you won't gain anything, you won't have any benefits. So taking care of that the um, process has been adopted to the new uh, environments or uh, new, new cloud uh, de deployments is really important step, as well as the technology. Technology is, 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 is core piece of a cloud adoption as well. So you need to take sure, make sure that you're using the right, right uh, um, systems, right tools for, for it. So putting, putting it as a, as a really, uh, this triangle in, in a focus, you, you will gain um, huge advantages, but it's a huge challenge too. Um, why I'm mentioning it? Um, because it's really, according to AWS, it's 70% of the of the change is actually non-technical. So out of the triangle, technology is just 30%. So consider, consider this while moving to the cloud. It's really important fact not to be disregarded. Um, I'll just give you a quick example. What does it mean if we, if we say we want to move to the cloud? If you look at um, the central piece of, the, of this picture, um, it's, let's say, cloud adoption. Um, we call it um, the ripple effect. So if you if you drop a, a, a you know a, a single drop of water on a nice smooth surface of water, it will start creating tidal waves, and these tidal waves are not just affecting the IT; it's entirely uh, affecting the entire company. So from um, let's say take an example finance, right? Um, simple example in finance is um, in regular on-prem data centers so or regular uh, old school IT, I would call it, you would have everything as a capex. So you would buy your capacities for over three years and depreciate it over three years. You will have very stable, um, very low risk planning ahead of you. So three finance would say once, you know, giving their check mark, uh, you're good, you can buy the equipment. Uh, you will have three years of, let's say, peace and quiet, there will be no, uh, no challenges there. Let's move to the cloud, right? Cloud is pay as a go, which means what you use, you pay for. And this is as well operational expenses, so it's OPEX, which means uh, besides some positive effects, you can depreciate these ones as well. There are challenges with it. Um, one of the challenges is the exploding cost. I'll come to that in, in uh, one of the next slides. Um, but finance people, so they are far away from the technology. They still have to have that understanding that cloud adoption will impact that. We need to really take care in the transition or in the transformation that these people are aware what it comes ahead of them, the shift from CAPEX to OPEX and additional security controls or, uh, or budget controls that need to intervene. Um, next thing, pardon me. Uh, next thing is, let's say, uh, HR. Um, sound, sounds logical. HR has nothing to do with the cloud, right? But you are suddenly in a requirement in completely different skill set. You, um, you need cloud engineers, you need cloud architects. You don't need network or system engineers. Um, you need to upskill your people. So HR needs to be aware what training programs, what uh, certifications, um, personnel in your company needs to actually uh, start doing to upskill them to the to the required levels. HR itself, it's out of the equation, but it's still uh, still impacted. So next thing is, for example, um, and this is really really one of the um, typical impacts is security and risk management. I mentioned risk earlier, but it's not only risk in terms of uh, stability. It's risk is the compliance. If you have um, some regulations like like the banks do or uh, or uh, insurances do, um, you have quite some regulations to actually keep in check before actually moving to the to the cloud. Um, as well as the security, um, you have to understand security is is something which needs to be baked in into the cloud into the cloud core uh, operations. Um, uh, security is inside the cloud, and you could you could imagine that 
everything theoretically can be open to the worldwide uh, world. So everybody could theoretically access your data or your workloads, but you don't want it. So you need to understand that there is a shift between um, all on-prem guarded network to something. Everything is open, so I need to safeguard it. And this is one of the one of the impacts that um, security, although this is a rather technical and process change, still needs to be done. And lately, um, I mean, why are we doing it is, is for the users, right? It's for the customers. Um, you might be surprised that might, some customers might not be ready to, to accept the accelerated adoption. You need to, to make sure that the, your uh, customers or your users are aware that as well that the change might the change process will accelerate that you will be deploying new features in a more shorter time frames it's positive to say shorter time to market but as well you need to take care of your users or your customers that there is a change process on there and they have to understand what is changing and how they are going to adopt these changes so as i mentioned it's it's really huge impact and um it's important to really address it and to to do uh, to do that um as a second step in the entire process we really recommend to um, manage the change so once when when we start migrating some and uh, supporting some customers in their cloud adoption we take the change management on the first place so we take sure make sure that the communication is right that the organization is aware so not only it the entire organization is being aware of the change and we define some um, strategies, be it architectural, be it, uh, be it um, uh, security, so that we start putting in some governance into, into this entire place. Because if we, if we let loose without any control, we might come to, um, to some problems, which I will show as a, as a next slide. So in this slide, I will be uh, talking uh, on the next uh, section, I will be talking about uh, premature cloud organizations, but um, I need a quick break. <laughs> I need to get some sip water in LOD. If you could, in, uh, in the meantime, please show us the poll results. Yes, sure. Let me, let me show those. Yes, sorry, on my screen, you can see Hannah Roldi, right? <laughs> But in real life, I'm Elodie. <laughs> so here on my screen, you can see the poll results. So it looks like most of the attendees in this call, Erol already are quite mature. Okay. So you can see um, level three, level four, and level five. This is nice. This and is this, this is, is good to see. Yeah. Um, that's actually, uh, to be honest, I didn't expect that, <laughs> which is good. Um, give some, um, give some uh, feeling of maturity. So the the interesting question would be, which we could probably uh, work on uh, later on in Q and A section, is um, uh, how these steps have been applied um, with our attendees. So this would be really interesting feedback to hear how the attendees have gone through these transformation will change as well as the organization will change through. This is really cool. This is really great, uh, great feedback to, to hear. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Elodie, for, uh, for giving me a quick break. <laughs> so, I'll move on. Uh, I'll move on to um, to last section of, of, uh, of my presentation. Um, so uh, I mentioned um, there might be some consequences of uh, moving into the cloud and uh, doing it without any governance or any any control i mentioned the exploding costs already a number of times and this is typically very common we have security um, issues as well and uh, quality uh, quality suffering in in terms of uh, moving to the cloud so just to to give some examples and just give really brief um, uh, overview what it what it's needs or how it affects. Um, exploding costs is something that usually happens when IT simply goes off and, and, and shoot into the cloud without any any sort of uh, financial control 
the discipline is called FinOps these days. So there are no budgets set up. There is, there is no uh, alarming, there's no monitoring. Um, usually the wrong sizing has been applied as well as, uh, as well as some, let's say, unused or stale workloads still running in a cloud. So you, there are a number of examples. And for example, one of, uh, one of uh, my previous engagements, a, a customer, um, it's, it was a um, uh, chemical and, 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 and sense uh, industry uh, based in Geneva. Uh, actually, um, these guys um, came to us and really cried for help. They're, they had really huge uh, expenses in the cloud because the way that they did it, they simply uncontrolled dumped everything. Um, they they were trans. Uh, they had started, which is kind of positive way, started with creating a data lake in the cloud, but then um, they were transferring all the data from on-prem uh, data warehouses to the cloud on a daily basis. And you could imagine this has cost them fortune. Hundreds of thousands of, 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 of euros they had to pay just for daily transfers. So it's, it, it has been done without any government. So it, they really had to pay a huge bill just for that. But um, Ero, would you say, Ero, would you say, sorry to interrupt, would you say this is a, an issue about training so was there like a lack of training for those teams or? yeah actually it, 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 it was um because if you if you remember that triangle we were we were talking about so they just started the technology but people were un, uh, not aware people were not aware about incurring costs so um cloud offers you so much possibilities to to play around to experiment with it but if you don't really attend the courses or if you don't if there is nobody else to tell you you have to take care that you don't overrun the budgets um people are usually unaware of it so as well uh, thanks for the question it's really an important one LOD, because um people simply start doing it so really just do it kind of a project but never take the, the, the entire uh, overview or let's say the holistic view of the, of the issue, um, as well as very simple, very simple way to save money in the cloud is shut down uh, an instance of server instance when you don't need it. Um, plenty of uh, development or test environments are usually built in the cloud, but if you leave them running 24 seven, you're not going to save money. Uh, I mean, you fraction you would probably save because of uh, cheaper costs but uh, you would really start saving money if you're shutting down your service in the evening and booting them up in the morning so more than tw uh, uh, 12 13 14 hours they are not used so why, why pay for that and people are not aware of it and this is where um, in such a cloud adoption project uh, upskilling the people is really important Next thing that we really see as a important uh, is that FinOps discipline. And this FinOps discipline gets trained for the, uh, through the people, through the upskilling as well, that there is a cost awareness being pushed into the edges of the organization, as well as the security. So again, um, if, you, if you look at uh, Microsoft Azure, and last figure I've seen Microsoft is investing around 1 billion a year on security, employing 3,500 security engineers. So you could imagine the brutal force of Microsoft in terms of security. They can make, they are making this secure as, 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 as it is possible. Not only physical security of a data center, so we're talking about workloads. If you look at the uh, entire Microsoft Office 365 running out of, uh, of the cloud. So they have to secure their uh, workloads and the same thing they want, they, they're giving the same options for you to do. But if you're unaware that you can use or what and how can you use it, it would result into security breaches, opening your workloads and pr plenty of other things. Um, so again, that people and process in, in this case is required that security in the cloud is again baked in into the core DNA of our operations and, and the cloud 
cloud adoption. Um, simple um, example how uh, bad how bad um, security can actually uh, incur cost is the DDoS attack. If you look at uh, what DDoS attack um, was previously uh, on-prem doing, was to somehow um, let's say make your workload whatever it is be it a website or an application unstable and basically you start losing money there right in cloud it's quite actually quite opposite in cloud you have all the possibility limitless possibilities of uh, scalability and flexibility so you can you can react to increased um, workloads if suddenly there are more people requiring your website or using your application so you have the flexibility but if this uh, additional workload and additional request is malicious uh, ddos attack so ddos attack is not in the cloud is not made to uh, destabilize your application it's ma it's made to incur cost for you so extra cost which you didn't usually cover and again these kinds of principles needs to be baked in, into the culture, into, into the people that they are aware of it. So usually starting, so to say, zero, zero trust uh, security, so everybody is saying just what needs to be done. But then on the other hand, baking in security into the entire um, deployment process. And coming down to the uh, last bit, um, and that is really the, the quality, um, where all processes, are applied to the to the new world. This doesn't work, or, or works so badly that that you actually having all the manual work uh, work done, provisioning out of a console and everything. So so actually all the benefits the cloud is bringing, uh, you're not using, and is is well as well missing the architecture, missing some governance. So plenty of other things which is now addressing mostly the process part of. Uh, of that magic triangle and if that part is missing again you won't profit of, of a cloud in terms of you will gain more uh, stability you're, you you'll be handling the risk properly now it's quite opposite you will be increasing the risk for your production workloads um to to tackle these um these these challenges to tackle these challenges we we created a step three and a step three is now a bit large larger um, uh, adoption from governance from security and people um, to operations and tooling including application workload so this is um, this step is basically the third step we we usually start with our customer engagements where we say first let's align the strategy then let's create some roadmaps and some uh, uh, guidance and then let's move to the to the technical bits and pieces, work on the processes and uh, work on the upskilling so that actually people in your company start working and operating the cloud in the right way. So the three simple steps uh, I, I displayed earlier is just a matter of a big picture. And uh, Remko, would you be so kind and guide us through? Yes, so, so, so I think one of the, the, the most important things, and then Errol already touched upon some of these points, is, is really when, when you start thinking about how to, how to move to the cloud, um, the, the first thing I think is to understand what does your business need, where is your, your business planning, your business strategy taking you? And, and there are different ways of looking at it, starting at, for example, what are you trying to achieve? And I think we could distill this entire slide down to one point. Every dollar, rappen, franc you spend on the cloud needs to be tied to your business strategy. And the part of that as well is you need to manage that change together with your business units. It's ideally not only a IT project. Very often it starts in IT. It's unfortunately not very often the business initiates that. I think it should be a balance between the two and they should collaborate. And uh, this is where CloudReach comes into play. As a third party, we can really help you find that balance, find that common ground and common language to tie the business strategy into the IT strategy, as the IT strategy should be a part of that fundamental as well. Manage the change to as well have the organizational transformation from a technical side but as well from the people side, people might have to acquire new skills, um, maybe refocus on, on part where 
the cloud sometimes can be seen as well as a potential threat um, by part of the organization. I think this is where cloud reach can really help you to take that threat away as the cloud actually needs more people to have good and solid cloud skills where we can build these people up um, to drive your innovation and change journey even faster. And a, a part of that is built a, a, a mutual strategy and roadmap and, and not only a theoretical document that, that no, people create, they put a lot of effort in and then it goes into a drawer never to be seen again. That, that is not the goal. What really is the goal is to tie it to an actual plan with real to-dos, some in the short term, mid and long term. And those are tied as well to your immediate business goals. And, and, and a part of that will be together probably with CloudReach, um, where we would team our people up with your teams in your business, um, where we work on that very transparent and, and, and with, with full visibility, what needs to be done where, having real action items from a technological, but maybe as well to, to question some of the things that are happening in the business. Um, and then it goes really, I always call it, compared a little bit to jogging or fitness, it, it's not a once of action, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle choice that you make going forward into the future. And a, a part of that cloud adoption is really getting the right governance in place, having the right people do the right job and focus on the right things. Do not over-engineer things. Sometimes you just have to get going and get busy with small steps. Uh, make sure you have the right equipment tools for the job and as well the right knowledge to look after and use these tools. Um, the operational side then comes in where either you look after it yourself with your current structure or you would give it to someone like CloudReach where we look after cloud environments for, for clients uh, in Switzerland and around the world. And then the, the next step is really to, to integrate that innovation journey in, in the next step where you get your business agility, your IT infrastructure is more modern. It is serving the need of innovation. And the interesting thing that you will see is the moment you drive innovation, very often you become much better at playing your own game in the sense of cost savings. And the money you save in cost can either be, um, let's say, uh, disembarked dollars or, or francs that you save from non-redundant uh, initiatives to innovation projects that are tied to your business strategy. And that is where our team of um, cloud advisors like Errol, that is what Errol exactly does for all our clients uh, in Switzerland and beyond, uh, to really just have a very common sense conversation. And I think that is the refreshing approach. We um, do not want to make it a too academic exercise, but really let's have a chat about cloud and see how it ties to your business. And what does your board need? What, what are the business goals? And, and how can we quit, distill some quick wins? Uh, so we, we help a lot of clients. And I think some of the things that are very, um, like, you know, they seem very complicated. Well, we do them for, for breakfast. It's a like bread and butter business. Um, we can bring some quick wins to the table very quickly, at least, or have some IGs on how to embark on that journey. And I think one of the things is build a cloud roadmap. Um, get the level playing field among the organization to get people going, um, build a cloud center of excellence where you have the right people from all parts of the business to drive these things forward. Um, and then start execution, uh, get rid of the, the, th the theoretical model, but really start moving forward. And I think these are some of the things we can help you with. Um, application modernization is then the next step. Once you have all your ducks in a row in the beginning, then you move on to application uh, modernization and other pieces. So the, these are some of the things, I mean, we could fill an entire day and I also recommend uh, ping me, phone me, all the contact details are there and Errol and I and the team are looking forward to speak with you. So Errol, back to you. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you, uh, Renko. Um, I would conclude this session uh, in terms of uh, content 